WLEE News Talk 990. You are listening to the Community Radio Show. Good morning. You are listening to WLEE News Talk 990. This is the Community Radio Show. Today is November 17th, 2012. Uh, seems to be a good day outside. I am your host, Bukhari Siraj, with co-host Muhammad Hadi here. How you good morning. Doing? You got the time, the date, and place. I'm all on right. point you today, man. You got me all riled up and whatnot here in the studio. But, you know, we're, we're going to get it cracking. So the best, the best thing is always the stuff that's off the air. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the show. It's a community radio show on WLEE News Talk 990. Number is 7880990. The toll free number is 877-953-3990. We've hit a milestone. We have we have our first uh, in studio guest. Yeah, man. I mean, we get we get all questions from all these people about like I want to help out, and that's usually code for code for you know I want to come on the air, and I'm like yeah we'll get back to you. Don't call me. I'll call. The, don't call us. We'll call you. But it's our uh, minister. Uh, Ali Farouk. <laughs> <laughs> El Hajj. El Hajj, I'm sorry. That's wow. right, that's right. Minister El Hajj. Ali Farouk X. Well, it's, it's an honor to be here. It's um, very exciting. Uh, <laughs> I'm really glad I could be the first. I think that's uh, it's a big milestone. Uh, nice. It's a cozy place. You guys have, you know, it's, it's really nice. This is what I imagine in my head when I think of, like, a talk radio show. Yeah. You know, yeah. the stuff on the walls and the, the old furniture. It's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here also here with Salvin, our great uh, producer. What's happening, Salvin? Sorry, we, we took your mic. We but, took your you know. mic, He yes. looks like he's in mission control. In <laughs> he NASA. is, he is, exactly. <laughs> we're about to launch. For, exactly. for those of you that don't know what, a, what the room might look like, probably two-thirds of it looks like mission control from NASA. And then the rest of us are cramped in this one corner. 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 <laughs> uh, so it's Small very capsule. Exactly. Small capsule. So yeah. So we we all make sure that we showered every every Saturday morning. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we're dudes anyway, so it doesn't That's really matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, you know. Should never shower. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, all right. Well, thanks for coming in. So for those of you who don't know, no, Ali Farouk is the uh, as a works as a policy anal- analyst in Richmond, Virginia. He's also the campus minister at William and Mary. Thus the title of you know minister minister exactly exactly and he's a recent uh returning from hatch so congratulations on that thank you Abru, thank you so. mashallah thank you so when did you get back i got back uh saturday night late saturday night november 3rd so what's that two weeks ago yeah the week, week, week and a half right ago before election so. yeah right just a few days before the election i, I literally touched down at reagan national like at 11 p.m mm. uh, it was rough and i had been traveling all day so i had left at Medina that morning, like at 6 a.m. <clears throat> so it was a long, long, long yeah, that's, trip. That's a, that's a long haul. Yeah. There, yeah. That is, I know. Um, so we asked you to come back. So for, for, for our listeners, to you know, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a couple s- segments on uh, on Hajj, and that's the, the, the pilgrimage that Muslims make to, to Mecca. It's an obligation um, to do it once, once in your lifetime. And so I interviewed Ellie before he went, and I got some of his thoughts on, you know, what he was expecting and why he decided to go and stuff. So we got a, we got a few cuts here, and uh, let me see if we can just so um, kind of kind of do a cut and then respond. Yeah, type session. Like, yeah, All let's right. see if we Sounds can good. we can work out the technical things here. I'm sure. I see uh, Selva's over there. Kind I know of he's ready. He's edit, ready. Editing all of the one sided mistakes that you made on the on the. So clip, we can go to so. cut number one. <laughs> we won't talk about those. Cut <laughs> number one. So. Well, I think it started out when several of my friends started going on hedge over the past few years. Okay. And so when they started going, that immediately I was like, wow, I didn't, I never thought that young people could go on Hajj or should go on Hajj. I always thought, well, it's something you do when you're older and more mature and you've got some money stashed away. And they all went and when they came back, they told me, they said, you know, I'm really glad I went when I'm younger because one, it, it is a difficult physical ordeal, but two, the Hajj, inshallah, it should change your life and it should change your perspective and change your Iman. And those changes are probably better if you do them earlier in life, when you have a chance to benefit from it and make some changes, as opposed to maybe near the end of your life, when some of those changes, you know, you don't really have an opportunity to, to change your destiny as much. So that was, that was what got me started to think about it, that, you know, maybe 
maybe when I'm younger, before I have a lot of kids and stuff, it, it's better to do that. Second, uh, I, I am very lucky and very blessed, mashallah, um, you know, we have a bad economy right now and people are struggling with work, but mashallah, I have, you know, I do work full time and so been able to save up some money and I am young and don't have any kids yet. So I am, you know, we're very blessed. I was able to save up some money. And uh, when I found out that my father-in-law was going and my brother-in-law was going, I thought, well, you know, it's it's now or never. You might as well do it now. Hmm. All right. So that was that was uh, Ali Farouk a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure I'm, sh- I'm not sure if you remember that uh, or if it's all a haze. About I, I was so young and naive. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. you, you notice you mentioned kids twice, so you can plan I know. on having yeah. a huge <laughs> bunch of kids <laughs> now that you got <laughs> Haj out the way. Yeah. You know, so but, but but how how much I know, I know you were you know you were saying you know how. Before it used to be a lot of people would save up, you know, before going on Hajj. One, how much did it actually cost you um, to go this year? So for me, I had a <clears throat> Hajj is expensive and gets really much more expensive. So I paid, mm-hmm. I think, just south of seven thousand dollars, okay, just for the trip, and then all the preparations. What people don't realize is that some of that stuff can get pretty pricey, mm-hmm. uh, and de- and I have my health insurance is okay. <laughs> so I had to pay a significant amount to get some of my travel vaccinations. You're talking, it could be, you know, $300, 400 right, right, for some right. of these vaccinations. Uh, and there's a few that are required, and then there's a lot that you might want to get just in case. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's also all the stuff you got to buy just to be prepared. You right. know, um, just one example, I would recommend that whoever goes on Hajj buy a really nice pair of sandals and not the flip-flops, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like the strappy kind that you can, because that's really important. And that that might... You know, you might pay a lot for one of those, but it's invaluable. Gotcha. So it can be pretty expensive, and uh, it depends. You know, there's different packages. 7000 I think, is a little bit... It's not cheap. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably a, sort of a moderate size package. You know, if you go with one of the baller packages, it could be twelve thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> I've heard that the, they actually the have some some, package. some outrageous packages. Actually, that's kind of off the off the grid. That you know, some of the yeah, there are always a lot. Of, when you're in Hajj, that's the funny thing. It's uh-huh. one of the things uh, I actually have a list in front of me of what I learned in Hajj. But one of the things I learned is that uh, human beings will never miss an opportunity mm. to try to one up each other. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't matter of where they are. Right? Exactly. Right. And so Hajj, the whole point of Hajj is that slowly. The process of Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, God Almighty strips away layers so that eventually you're all the same. Right. But even through that process, <laughs> still trying to get one still trying to get one higher. So <laughs> we, you know, you ask, there's these crazy wow. Hajj packages. We'd always talk about that when we're in the camps or we're mm-hmm. camping out or in Arafah. We're like, oh, yeah, look at that tent over there. You know, those must That's be the, the first class tent, right? Exactly. Yeah. I was say, like, did that tent have a fountain in it? What is that? Wow. wow. That's, that's, that's So, that's so uh, back to, uh, do, do you, I mean, obviously... You know, the, the timing presented itself and you went. And do, do, do you have, uh, I mean, I don't want to say regrets, but uh, yeah, maybe I say regrets as far as, I mean, the timing didn't work out. Do you think it was oh, good it was, time? It was wonderful. It really was a blessing. It's funny how we always say this, but this, you know, the Hajj really taught me this in a very real way that Allah, you know, God, He has a way of bringing things to you and bringing you through things mm-hmm. when the time is right. And so definitely Hajj was really, really hard. There were things that I messed up on. There were things that other people messed up on that I had to pay the price for. But no, over things, things like, like what? I'm, I'm curious. Exactly, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so. <clears throat> That's all right. You know. No, this, I know, this is real. You got to give me something. You got exactly. <laughs> so what you don't, you, for something as big as Hajj, you don't know what you don't know. Mm. And so I knew I had done so much research and I had learned so much about the steps of Hajj and what exactly happens and what do you have to do and when you have to do it. But you're, no one is ever prepared, unless you've been there and done it, no one's ever prepared for the fact that 5 million people are trying to do the exact same, same thing. thing right. And it's a logistical nightmare. <laughs> and so if you're not in one of the baller packages, there are things you have to deal with. Like, oh, I'm, I'm here, I'm in Azizia, I'm in Mina. Mm-hmm. And I have to get to Mecca. I have to get to the Kaaba. That's seven kilometers away. How do I do that? How many miles is seven kilometers? That's uh, about five, maybe four. Okay. Four, four, maybe five. Long ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and it's like, oh, well, let me, you know, let's get a bus. But, the bu- you know, there's five million people trying to get a bus. Mm-hmm. Let me get a cab. You know, there's five million people trying to get a cab. And none of it is organized. You know, you're in, you're not in America where mm-hmm. people wait in line. It's It's a mob. And so if your guide isn't, <laughs> prepared to walk you through that right 
you're lost. It's very, very difficult. I guess you can't, you can't just pick up and say, I screwed up, I'm just going to walk the five miles unless your well, whole group is willing to That's what I did. That's that. what we did. You walked it, that's, and that's another and, blessing. And that was as a group? Well, or three or four of us. Oh, okay. okay, uh, okay. So, and that's, again, that's why I would say if you're young, do it now because right. that's a luxury. It was really hard mm -hmm. in the Saudi heat to walk. And, you know, three or four days in a row, we walked 20, 25 kilometers right. all day. I mean, if you imagine walk out of your door at 9, 8, 9 30 in the morning, start walking and don't stop until 7 30 at night. Mm. And that's what it was like for three or four days in a row in the Saudi heat. Yeah. Uh, I want to come back to um, the, the notion of, of doing it as, as a young age, but I, I pulled up some stats that was put out by the uh, Saudi government ministry of Hajj um, to kind of give you the magnitude of, of kind of the convergence of so many people. So on Tuesday, October 16th, uh, the embassy reported, or the Ministry of Hajj reported, that there were a million three hundred three thousand pilgrims. Mm -hmm. A million to arrive by air, seventy-five thousand by land, and fifteen thousand by sea. Yeah, the fifteen thousand by sea. Is <clears> that was interesting. Was like, I'm like, huh, cargo ships. I, 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 wow. Across you know, the Red yeah. Sea or the, the Mediterranean. Flotilla. Flotilla, right. Fleet. <laughs> flotilla, right. So that was on Tuesday, and then on Monday, the twenty-second. So a little over the eight days, right around more. eight days, mm -hmm. I had a million seven hundred thousand. So in a span of eight days, half a million people. It doubled. Yeah. Yeah, from all over the world are just coming there. And those are the official estimates. And what a lot of people don't realize is that. I use, the num I use the number 5 million because uh, there are actually a lot of people who perform Hajj illegally, meaning that they don't have an official visa or maybe they do um, <coughs> and they kind of sneak in. They yeah. join a group. They just, you know, and so that's a lot. And there were several people who I met that were even in the American group. And I was in an American group. All right. There are several people in our in my group that, that were like that. And they're not poor people necessarily, but there are restrictions on how often you can perform Hajj. Mm -hmm. And it is such a powerful experience that people feel compelled to come back the next year or just two years later. Right. And that's a lot. That's And you see whole tents. And that's one of the things I saw. I got lost actually outside of Mecca in a little town called Azizia, which is technically part of Mecca, but it's a good three, four kilometers away. Okay. <coughs> And we literally got lost there for three and a half hours. Again, like the hottest part of the day, wandering around in Saudi Arabia. There's, there's so wow. much of that. And <laughs> for three and a half hours, we're wandering around this area. And this is where suddenly we realize, wow, this is where the third world performs Hajj. Because if you imagine in your head, imagine a normal suburb, mm -hmm. uh, you know, streets and shops and retail and things like that and right. Walmart. And imagine in your head every open space, every parking lot, Every grassy knoll, every shaded staircase mm. is completely covered with people and tents. I mean, there is not, you couldn't, you would have a hard time walking through it. Mm. And that's what it was like. It was absolute madness. We were wandering around as easier for three and a half hours trying to find our, our, our hotel, our apartment. And we ran through these tent cities and we had to get to our apartment and you can't get there because everything is covered in people. Right. People sleeping, people eating, people just watching, people, you know, doing their business. And people selling stuff. Just oh, yeah, people right. selling Boy, kids. Just, a lot of his teenagers you and say kids. selling kids? No, no, kids okay. selling. Okay. Selling oh, kids. Oh, okay. on, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I had to clarify that. Children that are vendors. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, really yeah. kids, they like 10-year-old. Right. Like little, little kids. Would be, and they just pop they're, up in the tops, and they're just tea. They're trying to make money for the family. Exactly. They're selling tea. They're selling cheap trinkets from China. That's the biggest thing, the trinkets from China. They're everywhere. I know, everything. And so we tried to get to our apartment, and we had to go through the tent city. I mean, not just through the city through tents mm -hmm. we'd have to duck into a tent and people are pissed because it's their space but you have no choice and so we got hit at and spanked at by a lot of old women because we're going through their tents wow. but there's no choice you have no other choice right. and uh, it's that's when you're like wow i'm an american and i i am in a five-star hotel All but right. the rest of the world can't do that mm -hmm. there's only so many five-star hotels and they're pretty expensive and so if you're from India or you're from another part of the world, even if you're not a poor person, you know, you could be a middle class person from India and it'd be pretty rough, mm -hmm. you know. And so you suddenly are like, God, I love being an American. I, I have to tell you that that for, for, for people that have never been to a third world, I think technically they're referred to as a developing world. Now, third world well, is not Saudi you know. Arabia is not I wouldn't classify Saudi Arabia as third world. Right. But but there are parts of the culture, culture. that right. are third world. Right. right. 
and, and not not to be one simple thing standing in line there is standing no line there's no there's no line it's, no line. it's yeah. just kind of this confluence of people that are just hanging around and right. if you if you're an american staying in the back waiting for order never gonna you're happen. not you're, you have to fight you have to you, you have you, to fight you're your just way. you know you're 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 you know elbows and you know mm-hmm. this and, you, you, and it was difficult it was difficult but, because you go there for a spiritual journey and so you're prepared to be loving and patient and merciful and forgiving and yet you have to be really aggressive right and you have to sometimes, even for simple things like, I'm dying, we've been walking around for three hours, and I need a bottle of water. you got to fight your way. And it doesn't feel good. But again, that's, you know, Hajj puts you through yes, these experiences. The other, other so the spiritual there's, yeah, aspect. so you mentioned this, you mentioned the spiritual, the spiritual journey. So if we can go to uh, uh, cut two, that's just you talking about kind of your preparation on the spiritual. Um, a lot of people forget is there is a lot of preparation that's mental and spiritual. And so that's been what that's what I've been going through the past few days as you know there's not that much more that I have to prepare um but now I have to prepare myself mentally and spiritually and so I've already started to think about you know hajj is difficult and in America we we're used to this idea that the more you pay the better things are but in hajj you know it doesn't matter how fancy of a hajj package you take ultimately you all end up at the same place right and so you have to be ready for the difficulties of hajj you have to be ready for the fact that you're going to be sleeping in tents with three million other people, and it's going to be grimy. And yet, that is the hajj. The hajj is difficult, and it's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be a difficult journey. And like anything else that's difficult, it forces you to come face-to-face with yourself. I think for me, hajj is going to be a test in patience and a, and a journey where I get to know myself better and I get to know Allah better. And so what I mean by that is when you go on Hajj, when you go on any when you go through anything difficult, you know, whether it's a difficulty with your family or your job or whatever, you know, what happens is you you do things that surprise you. And sometimes those surprises are good and sometimes they're bad. So sometimes you'll go through something difficult and you'll act in a way that makes you ashamed. You know, you'll you'll break down, you'll stress out, you'll freak out, and you're like, man, I panicked and I shouldn't have. Or you'll find yourself rising above it and working harder than you ex- imagined. And so that's what I'm hoping and expecting this Hajj. Like my, my goal is I want to be more patient than I think I can be. Uh, I want to be more calm than I think I can be. I want to have a deeper connection with Allah than I think, than I've ever had. And that's my goal. I don't, you know, I don't want to be stressed out. I don't want to be freaking out if things go wrong. And I don't want to be like, you know, whining and moaning about how difficult stuff is and losing the opportunity to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so I guess question there: Did you did you achieve that? Were you were you not <laughs> were you not stressed out? You know, did you did you feel closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? I mean, how 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 were you there um, in terms of your focus of gaining that spirituality um, then, and also has that um, transition with you back here now that now that now that you're yeah. back home? And that's that's the most important thing about Hajj is that. You know, what did you take out of it and how is it going to change your life? Mm. So the answer to your question is, I hope I did. I I didn't freak out at any point. I didn't argue with people. I never, I really never got angry. Mm. And you would see crazy things and you'd just be like, oh, you know, whatever. Right. And so it, I feel a lot better now that I'm here back at home. You know, I think I am, I've always been a little bit of a high strung person. Mm -hmm. And so I think I've definitely calmed down. And the proof is that even my wife thinks I've calmed down. No, that's good. And so, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the other thing is that with Hajj, when people think of a pilgrimage or when people think of spirituality, they always think of it as an individual exercise. <coughs> but what you have to realize and what a big part of Hajj is, is dealing with people. And you can't escape that. You cannot escape the crowd at Hajj. Right. No matter how tired and stressed out you get and you're like, man, I need some time to myself or I just need... And you can't. You can't go anywhere without it being absolutely packed with people. And so you learn, I think, a really important spiritual lesson, which is that in this life, in this world, I mean, they're people, you know, you got it. You can't get away from people. You got to learn to deal with people and be okay with people and love people and be forgiving. And we all know that intellectually, but Hajj forces you to learn it and live it. And that's a invaluable lesson. You're listening to the community radio show on WLEE News Talk 990. We have a guest in the studio. His name is Ali Farouk. He just returned from Hajj. And we're talking about his experience and what he uh, thought he was going to get out of it before he left and, and what, what he actually occurred um, coming back. We'll continue our conversation on the other side of the break. 
please feel free to call us at 788-0990. The number 788-0990 is a community radio show on WLEE News Talk 990.